How to conclude a debate. Hello, Susu. Um, you know how to do affirmative and negative very well. Thank you for your good work. You guys are good. Um, hi, Susu. And so today we're going to conclude the debate is to show you how to finish a debate. Susu, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. What about you? Good. Did you enjoy last night's new reading students, uh, writing students and writing number two? Yeah. Yeah, they seem like they're really nice uh, students. I really enjoyed them. I thought they were really funny. So thank you for helping to make them feel welcome to our class because um, yeah, there was a nice boy. I like that boy, uh, Tony. And what was that nice girl's name? I forget her name, Susu. Um, you were chatting with her in the chat box about pizzas and stuff. <laughs> and some guy who smells bad. Uh, I forget what you called him. Mr. Cheesehead, you called him. <laughs> Cheese brain. Where did you hear about cheese brain? My teacher, John, probably, um, huh. he's so funny, he said he's a cheese brain, and he, he his socks are smelly, and he said lots um, of bad things about him. Is he from America, John? No, he's from England. Oh, okay, because I put in the chats, there's Wisconsin is the state above my hometown, Chicago, and they call those people Susu cheese heads because Wisconsin has all these milk cows and they make the orange cheddar cheese that many Americans. So their nickname is cheddar heads. They call them cheddar heads. And uh, so I thought maybe your teacher, John, is from Wisconsin, cheddar heads. Susu, I'll show you a picture of that because everybody's coming. Uh, let me see if I can do it now, Susu, because I think you would find that really funny. So when people go to the Wisconsin football games, they wear the cheddar head block. When you see it, it will be so funny. Okay, let's see. We get a cheddar head picture. There they are. Um, so the football team's colors are green and yellow, Susu. So the team members <laughs> look like this. And this guy's a famous cheddar head, right? So this is what I thought you meant when you were talking about that. Cheese head, right? Oh, and my so, God. I know. Isn't it crazy? So he has a block of cheese and he's painted yellow and green. This is my hometown. Chicago's number one rival is the Cheddar Head. So there they are, the Cheddar Heads. They wear this to the football stadium every Sunday because they want to show their support, the Cheddar Heads. So, Susu, when you said this, I thought, oh, OK, so Susu's teacher of John is from Wisconsin. Susu, let me show you where Wisconsin is because it's good for you guys to learn this. Wisconsin on a map, and then this helps you with your geography skills. Um, there's Wisconsin near my hometown, Chicago. And it's actually, there aren't many cities. It has beautiful villages and towns with only two or three big cities. And there it is, Wisconsin, Susu. So there's the famous city of Milwaukee, and my hometown is Chicago here. But our village was here north, so we're actually about one hour drive from uh, Wisconsin. And if you go to Wisconsin, you can go skiing in these beautiful places, Madison here. They have so ski. That, um, so that place is the cheese place, right? Oh yeah, all of these have uh, milk farms for cows. So they this is all cheese. They always have to wear a cheese in their hats. Yeah, if you go to the football games in Green Bay is where it is. But I think they do the football games in Milwaukee Stadium. But it's actually Green Bay is this uh, city here. And that's all milk and uh, beef, also beef and pigs. They really like heavy food, Susu. So now you know all about Wisconsin. Um, if any of you guys want to go to the University of Wisconsin, let me show you again, Susu. This is actually a really good college if any of our students are interested in it. The city here is called Madison. And this is one of the, I'd say it's in the top 20 American public colleges that don't cost so much money. Um, and so your family could, you know, pay for that. Wisconsin. All right. Nice work. I hope you can go there someday, but it's cold in winter, so please be careful if you go to Wisconsin. In All right. the winter, yeah. um, Miss um, uh, Santa, what, what, 
Yeah. Uh, we're gonna eat cheese no, Mary. and Santa will wouldn't eat a cookie. Santa will eat cheese. Yes. And guess for and guess the gift for the that the Santa gives for the children is cheese. Yes, when you take a picture, you say cheese. Hey, Mary, what did you want to ask? You a question, Mary, with those stylish glasses. He gives me the skin in your uh, like hometown. I love the cold weather. With yeah. Winter, snow was. Yeah. Oh, but well, I only uh, play in the snow. Hello, Mr. Brendan. Hello. I just remember. I just remember that yeah. when uh, I look at the uh, pictures of yeah. um, me. Mary, where uh, was your hometown? Mary, what was the hometown? Can you tell me one more time? This, I mean, uh, did you ever give skiing in your... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chicago? Yeah, Mary, so I grew up in Chicago, and it's really cold in Chicago in winter. So in high school, my friends and I would drive the car for 90 minutes to Madison, Wisconsin. And there were some ski places in Madison where all the college students are. They're pretty good, pretty good ski places, Mary. Uh, Mary. But the best place, do you want to see where the best place? Oh, I'm sorry, it's not sharing. Um, let me show you. Okay, so Mary, if you see, this is my hometown, Chicago. We would drive the car here to Madison for about 90 minutes. And this had pretty good skiing near these lakes. Um, it wasn't great skiing. It was so-so. But Mary, you asked me a great question. Let me show you. The very good place to go was Colorado. Um, Colorado map. And this is where my sister lives. And this has really good skiing. It's here's America. This is Chicago. So you take an airplane and it takes about two hours to get to Chicago, uh, from Chicago here to um, Colorado. Colorado looks like it's just a big red box state. And if you go to the mountains here, Mary, it's really good skiing. So let me show you a picture of that Colorado skiing because it's a nice question, Mary. So this is what Colorado looks like for skiing. I mean, it's unbelievably beautiful. Mimi, did you go skiing when you lived in Georgia? Um, I did. Yeah. So you can take an airplane like Atlanta to Denver is probably like three and a half hours. Um, and then you change in Denver airport, you change to a bus. It takes about 90 minutes and you go higher and higher in the mountains. The air gets really thin. So it's difficult for me to breathe because I have breathing problems. But once you get there, you can do this beautiful skiing. I mean, it's just unbelievable skiing. It's not too cold, actually, but it is challenging skiing. It's not easy skiing. These mountains are so steep. This is relaxing style. This is really good for kids. But for teenagers, you can start doing this really um, high skiing. But again, it takes a lot of energy and it's easy to get tired. And you have to get into these chairs and go. So these are kind of scary. You sit in this and it takes you to the top of the mountain. So Mary, it brings back nice memories skiing in Colorado. All right. Let me see who's all here. We're just warming up, you guys. So we have Mimi, Ken, Mr. Thomas. We have uh, Nugan, Hai Chi, hello Anna, hello Harry, hello Bean, I love that name, Bean and Rose and Layla and May and Jin and Messi, Messi's here, Messi, good. Hey Messi, I had to tell some boy I know that you really love soccer and they thought that was interesting that you have a student who plays soccer called Messi and they were asking me all kinds of questions, a, a Japanese boy. Mm. All right, so what did Mary, uh, Mary also wrote, what uh, what was she saying? The mice will eat all the cheese in the brain from the teacher who had the cheese brain because they love cheese. And it's really funny. If you look in the chat, Mary and Susu are having a discussion about cheese because Mimi and uh, Jen, um, <laughs> Susu's teacher in school said, call me Cheesehead. He's a guy from England. And that's just very funny because Cheesehead is kind of a foolish no, person. No, no. He said, told, I'm a cheese brain. Cheese brain. So does that mean he has holes in his brain, like his thinking isn't so good? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he always forgot things. Oh, yeah. See, that's what he means by cheese brain, because when you have holes, you know, Susu, you know the kind of cheese that has holes in it is called Swiss cheese, right? 
Yeah. So that's what I think he means by being a cheese brain. Swiss cheese here. Let me show everybody because, you know, you guys are living in a hot climate and you have to go to the supermarket to find Swiss cheese. So I think that Susu is talking about this cheese here. Susu, this is Swiss cheese with a hole in it. The real Yay. name is Chantal. So that's what he means. He has holes in his brain, which is kind of crazy that he would say, I have holes in my brains like a piece of Swiss cheese. Very funny, Susu. Yeah, <laughs> okay. very funny. All right. Hey, um, you guys, to start today's lesson, I just want to look at two homeworks because you guys did a nice job on your homework. So I'm going to go to the YALO group. And um, for the homework, let's do two of these videos because you worked really hard on this. Uh, is uh, Uyin here? Uyin? Uyin? Who? Uyin Tan? Are you here, Uyin? Uyin. Sometimes you use different names. So Uyin. Let's see. Uyen or Uyin? I don't see Uyin. Uh, let's see. Do we have uh, Rose? Rose, are you here? I thought I saw Rose. Hey, Rose, are you here? Rose, 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 where is I'm Rose? here. Hey, Rose, can I show your video because you did a nice job on this and you said, please check my homework. So let's everybody look at Rose. Rose, you always do a great job. So please don't worry about it. Please don't be embarrassed. OK. And uh, yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Let's put Rose on the big screen and then I have to. Hello, teacher of reading and other teachers. My name is Rose. I'm 10 years old. I'm from Yatang City. Today, I will talk about my debate homework. Uh -huh. Teacher Freedom has guided me two topics. Topic number one is, hey, where should is students Rose? be allowed to use smartphones in school? And topic number two is, should there be surveillance camera in your Wait, classroom? Where is Rose? I'm sorry about this, sure there is good behavior. Uh -huh. Oh. So I will choose the topic number one, for my debate homework. Uh -huh. Should students be allowed to use smartphones in school? I think the thing that students should be allowed to use smartphone in school or not also depend on the student's behavior. If their behavior is good, then they can bring the smartphone to school like <clears throat> If the students can control the attract from the smartphones, they mm -hmm. can bring smartphones to school to find information for the lesson or even use smartphones to ask the friends, ask teacher or family something. And using smartphone at school can also help us to know like what is going on at home. Like, when we go to school, our mother said that this afternoon at five o'clock, I will touch you. But how about I have, have some business mm. and your mother will touch you at about 5, 15 or 30, who knows? So if there is a smartphone, your family can call to you mm. and we can talk about that thing and it more easier. And don't make us feel like scared or afraid. But if the students can control mm. their feelings, their brain, mm. and they are attracted by smartphones. Mm. So it's pretty bad to mm. bring smartphones to school because if the students can control their like feelings, they wanted to use the smartphones, then if they bring smartphones to class, they will play games and they don't pay any attention to the lesson that they are studying. That can lead to that those students will get bad right. And they even one thing that is important for students who can't control their feelings and wanted to use in the smartphone. If they bring smartphone to school and all day long, they just play on the smartphones 
not pay any attention to school, their eyes can be ruined too. They will have bad eyesight, short sight, and that's not good for a student. And I think there's one more thing. Right. That when students go to school, go to school is a place for us to study. The most important thing is study. And the next thing is to meet and play with friends. But if we bring a smartphone to school, like a recess when it's break time, all we do is just stay at our seats and play video games. It's not good. So I think we're either it a bad student or a good student or not. Bringing smartphone to school is not a really good choice. I think going to school is to study, and in break time, as you said, we can play with friends, talking with friends about something, and that's more good than using smartphones to play or reset. So I think students shouldn't be allowed to bring smartphones to school. Bye. All right. Bye-bye, Rose. What do you guys think? Pretty good? Good presentation. Let's check with you guys. Rose, thank you for that. Um, nice, nice thorough. That's almost a full debate style. Harry, are you there? Yes. Harry, I have yours, but I want to make sure I can see it because I couldn't see Rose actually do her presentation. So I want to get Mr. Harry for his presentation. And there you are. Okay, let me see if I can get this to work better this time. Hello, you guys. teacher Brendan. I'm not teacher Michael. Oh, okay. I will explain my opinion on having cameras set up in class. I think that having cameras in class won't improve the students. Teacher Brendan, I can see her video. I know. Cameras in the whole school, in the hallways and classes will reach about millions of dollars. Where and also we need to pay for the employer who is um, watching the cameras for us huh. and also the electricity fees. Secondly, having cameras in classes won't improve the student's behavior. Some students like to break the law mm -hmm. or school rules and they don't care about new school or tighten education. Some students, which is bad at my class, um, likes to break rules and offense against the rules. Oh, here he is, okay. Some of them even fight in front of teachers and let be punished because they don't care about being punished or step a toe out of line. That is all my opinion on having cameras set up in class. Thank you. Very nice, Harry. What I like is when you do your um, presentations for debate, you don't really look at notes so much. You do most of it from memory. It's a, it's a good style. Very good work. So I found out what happened. They pushed your image to the bottom of the screen. That's kind of crazy, you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, today, let's start today's main lesson. It's the last lesson for today, uh, for this session of 10 weeks. You guys have done a great job. But um, let me show you for tonight. Save. Um, for today, we're going to do the final conclusion. If I can find my final conclusion, you guys. Uh, one moment, please. That's last week. Concluding arguments is what this is called, actually. Now, listen, I'm going to need some readers. Mary, can we start with you to read for us? Is your microphone okay? Yeah, my microphone is okay. Oh, it kind of has a robot noise, though. <laughs> Something happened to your microphone, Mary. It sounds like robot voice. So can you adjust the microphone? Can you hear me? No, it sounds really strange. It's like, like this, you know? Hey, Jen, how's your microphone? It's good. Jen, would you like to read for us? 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Read what? Read what? That's <laughs> such a great question, Jen. Read what, teacher? Here we go, Jen. And Mary, if your microphone works, we'll come back to you, I promise. Okay, um, Jen, can you read this blue block here? Yeah. Today okay. is the last day of debate class, and we need to finish one important thing before you, gradu you graduate from your 10-week course. We have to know, learn how to end or conclude a debate. This area of debate can can get kind of confusing. Today, goal, goals is to study, to know or formalize yourself with the ideas here so they are not new when you study these topics again. If you able to say, ah, I know what the teachers or debate coach mean. We studied this English before. I understand this. And hopefully, if you have classmates who don't understand, you can take a little time and help them to understand, right? I, Jen, would you help a classmate who never took a debate class? Could you be a team captain or a coach and say, you guys, you have to do it this way. This is the correct way to do debate. Would you do that? Because you took our 10 week course, maybe you guys could help your classmates in school if you like your classmates in school. All right, <laughs> let's ask, hey, Susu, do you like your classmates in your school? I love them a lot because they play with me and they play the damage monster game. Oh, okay. I'm asking because one girl wrote this sad paper that I read yesterday. It said, I don't have any more friends left, but one friend plays with me. And Susu, I was really sad for that little girl. I said, what happened? Now she only has one friend. So that's why I ask. You know. I'm so sad. I know. I'm sad for her too. All right. Hey, um, Susu, can you read this part here? Conclude. Can you read this? It has some big words. So if you need help, I'll help you. Let me just show you. We have reiterate is to say again. Um, audience are the people listening. Repetition is repeating the ideas. Impact analysis. Emphasize. Positive outcomes. Do you want to try, Susu? Read the blue part. Okay. Conclude your team's presentation or arguments. Reiterate key points. This means you say your key points one more time so the judge and audience members really understand what your argument is so they can judge it. Repetition. Repeating your points. Impact analyze. Emphasis the positive outcomes or benefits that adopt your team ideas could bring. Nice, Susu. You got that word reiterate. Reiterate means say again, make it important and say it again. So in debate, you say points again and again so they really understand what you're saying. So that's really important. Reiterate. All right, Mary, you have your hand up. Did you get that microphone fixed? <laughs> Can you hear me, teacher? Yeah, you got it, Mary. Nice work. Hey, Mary, we're going to use more of this reiterate. I'm going to give you something really big to read because you are a good reader. Would you like to read that one? Yeah, I would like to. All right. Where's the first part of reiterate? It's yeah. pretty easy to do because you quickly stick the main ideas again. The impact analysis is a little more difficult. Many of you already know how to do this because in your videos, I often hear comments or statements that suggest how things could be better. Mm. For example, if some of you agree that your school should have a better playground, then you follow this statement by saying, Better playground means students will be safer on new equipments. 
and they will be less stressed after studying all day if they can play on a nice playground. Then you have already shown us how to you know how to infect our analysis. Mm. Another example in our country, it, in our school, in our school, our yeah. school change uh, like summer uniform. Huh? Students would feel less heat in the summer, and they might not get too tired after lunch. A light way the uniform makes students feel better about themselves. Very good, Mary. Nice reading. So you see, that's ending your speech or your presentation with something positive to say, and that's called the impact analysis. Impact analysis. Well, you give this speech, so what's so good about it? What's so great about it? It's because you want to make a good improvement for your school um, with school uniforms or better playgrounds. So it has that big word, impact. What change are you going to make? And that should be part of your concluding arguments, like things could be better if we did these things. May, you raised your hand. Do you have a question, May? No, I just raised my hand to, for, to read the next All right. paragraph. All right. May, would you like to read this one? It's called Address well, it's counter, counter Arguments. arguments. Yes, okay. address okay. counter arguments. Remember the affirmative team goes first, then the negative team argues against your points. But when you conclude or finish, you should answer the points the other team was making against your original agreement. This part sounds difficult too, but let's try it. Okay. okay, Mr. Thomas, you said, I'm bored. Thomas, what can we do so you won't be so bored? With that wonderful smile, that's a mischievous smile, you intelligent boy. I want to read the next, next thing. It sounds like a good idea. We have green and we have red. Can you read these ones? Okay. <laughs> Our team firmly believes schools should change the school lunch. We should eat less junk food, and we should have more fruit and vegetables. Mm. Thank you to Negative the team. team for presenting the case. However, we must respectfully disagree. More vegetables are a good recommendation. More fresh food means more sugar in the student diet. More mm. sugar makes kids hyperactive after lunch. Yeah, Mr. Thomas, H. Thomas, do you think sugar makes kids hyperactive? That's the red position, the negative. Hey, Thomas, do you eat a lot of sugar or do your mom and dad say no? I don't need sugar. That's good. It's good to I know. Only, I only need cheese. You only eat cheese? Everybody's talking no, about I, cheese. I like cheese. All right. It's probably healthier than sugar, it's Thomas. By itself. Mm, okay. Very good. All right. Let's go down the line because I talked to Jen. I talked to Mr. Thomas. I talked to May. Susu, uh, Ken and Harry. Moon, are you there, Moon? Moon, can yeah. you help me? Can you read this green one? It's the affirmative team conclusion. Remember today we're talking about those conclusions. Those conclusions have to be strong for your debate. Here we go. Affirmative team conclusion. The okay, negative team has assert mm. that fruits for lunch has a lot of nature sugar. However, this is not sparked by the events yeah. we present earlier. When we see fruits, we mean star fruits with a lot of vitamin C, like oranges, lemons, and grape fruits, while apples, bananas, and strawberries do contain a lot of nature sugar. The high vitamin C fruits such as citrons do not. 
Nice, really good reading. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's go to Ken, Ken Ten. Are you there, Mr. Ken Ten, with the Japanese uh, manga honey may behind you? Ken, are you there, Mr. Ken Ten? Ken, Ken, what happened to Ken? Ken, hello, mm -hmm. Ken. <laughs> How are you? Hey, Ken, can you read this part here for the conclusion? For a conclusion, the affirmative team should know these expressions of virus. Rebuttal, yeah. checking for inaccuracies. Inaccuracies or mistakes the other team made. The yeah. negative team has asserted that all primary students should not be required to play on a sports team after school. However, this is not supported by the events we presented earlier. Mm. And trade to the neg negative mm. teams uh, claim. claim that the debt how we prove clearly uh, demonstrates. Yeah, nice work, Ken. So those are really important for your negative team or your positive team, your affirmative team, mm -hmm. right? Is Nam there? Nam? Yes. Nam, would you like to read this part here called Clarifying Misinterpretations? Yes. Okay, here we go. Here's Nam, everybody. Misinterpretations. The negative team seems to have misunderstood our mm -hmm. argument about playing on sports teams. Mm -hmm. After school, they misunderstand us when we say must play on sports teams. They only suggest some students would like to do this. We do not mean all students must do this. Yeah, nice work on that one. And can you read one more here? Yes. Okay, now. It appears that the negative team has misconstrued yeah. Our stance on yes. students playing sports after school. Allow us to clarify. Yeah, so do you see this? Words we're using, these words we're using, they're very clear and precise and they have good manners. You don't want to say about the other team, well, they lie. <laughs> they are changing our words. We're really angry. You guys can't do that in a debate. You have to say they have misconstrued, which is a fancy word to say they changed our words. We're not happy about that, right? So you calmly say they have misconstrued our stance on students playing sports after school. Okay, Susan, would you like to try this here called rejecting unsubstantiated claims? That means that there isn't enough support for their claim, but they're making some pretty wild claim. Would you like to read it, Susan? Yes, thank you. But I have, I'm having like a cough, so it uh, might be a bit hard to hear. Oh, all right. Rejecting unsubstantiated claims. The negative team has made a sweeping statement that our team supports making all students play on sports teams after school because it makes students stronger. However, they have not provided any credible evidence to support this assertion. <laughs> when our team supports after school sports, we mean many students love a certain sport but the school does not offer the sport as an after-school possibility. The affirmative team only wants schools to consider a sports program after school. Very nice. Uh, that was good reading, I think. All right. So let's, we won't use breakout rooms because I don't have any uh, teacher's assistants today. Uh, but let's see, let's play a game where you guys try to do this. Um, let's do the chat. I'm going to change this, you guys, just to chat, okay? And you guys in chat, write something that you support. Like, I think every student should eat as much chocolate as they want, right? And then I'm going to negate what anybody says. I'm going to negate that. So, yeah. Tom's so is Tom's smiling. Is smiling. I think you really, want to, really want to try this. May, if May, you want to try you this. Want to try this. Okay. Uh, let's see who else. Mary, all of you should try try to leave me at least one comment. 
But you guys, if you want to join the chat, you can also negate the comments yourself. But remember, use good manners. Don't say, oh, that's foolish. I disagree. Um, I'm going to leave this up here on this thing. You could say, your comments seem to have misunderstood our arguments, right? Um, about playing on sports after team. So pretend that everyone is on a team and then you just say, your comments are not supporting what our team says, okay? So you can write anything you want, but don't make it really weird. It can be just a little bit strong. It doesn't have to be totally serious. I'm looking at chat now and uh, let's see what we have. This is for everyone. Okay, so make a statement, everyone. Make a statement here, okay? So make a statement here in the chat box and I will negate it using the good language of debate. Let's take about 10 minutes to do this, okay? If you want, maybe I can play you nice music while you do this. What should we listen to? What kind of music do you guys like? Mr. Brennan, so it's any statement, right? Like, yeah, but, uh, any statement. And then I'll, you know, I'll negate it. Um, let's see, what do we have? Oh, let's see, I'll turn this a little low. Hmm, oh, I can't do it. Zoom doesn't let me um, do that, okay. I was going to play you some music, but Zoom won't let me do that because it's Zooming from a thing. Okay, so I'm just looking for the statements and then I'll, I promise I'll put polite language, okay? I think every company should uh, give the workers two hours to sleep in the afternoon. Hey, May, actually, I, I think that's a really good idea too, but um, I'll say um, the negative team. Uh, has made a sweeping statement about naps in the afternoon. The naps should only be for a small number of workers who have too much stress or are sick. Okay, so uh, this one was from May, I believe. May said, um, I think every company, so May, actually, I agree with what you're saying, but for this one, I'm just gonna say, the negative team has made a sweeping statement about naps in the afternoon. The nap should be for only a small number of workers who have too much stress or are sick, all right? Let's see what else we have. Hachi to Susan, students should, allow the students to do whatever they want. Actually, I think you mean schools, uh, Hachi. Um, Sorry. Or, yeah, that's okay. Uh, for 1.5 hours in the noon that they were all meant to be sleeping. Oh, okay, so you mean if they're not sleeping, they can do whatever they want. That's not bad, we could use that. Yes. So let's see, um, we'll have to change that to, um, Hmm, I'm going to use good language here. The negative team, all right, the negative team seems to have misunderstood our argument about what exactly is free time. When we say free time, we mean freedom to do whatever we want. And that includes sleeping, <laughs> okay? So who was that that put that there? Uh, Jen said, I bet my mom will let me play all day. <laughs> so Jen, I'm gonna write, it appears that you have given your mother too much credit for being for being an absolute free mother um maybe we misunderstand her <laughs> okay
There, Jen, what do you think? It appears that you have given your mother too much credit for being an absolutely free mother. Maybe we misunderstand her ideas on being what free is. Free to do what you want in your free time. Yeah. Only after the homework is done, maybe, right? Um, Only if you get the homework done will you have a free mother. Okay, let's see what else. You guys are putting some good ideas in here. There are different types of forks, about 19 of them, Thomas said. I think that there should be only one type of fork. Oh, my goodness, Thomas. <laughs> you don't. You don't understand. Thomas. You don't understand. Your team seems to misunderstand. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think the fork is just... Wait, let me go to my comment. Wait, wait. Oh, my gosh. It's clutching my... Oh, no. Okay. So, basically... Oh, one new matches. It's okay. it's glitching. No, no. My comments. Okay, 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 okay. It's good. So basically, Brandon, are you you search in Google all types of forks? You yeah, get that's what I'm um, do. <laughs> about nineteen of them. <laughs> there's Thomas, more, gonna... and right. there's. And there's more. Oh, Thomas, I'm going to show you something. More forks. There are 19 okay. types of forks. Okay, Thomas, you're going to get it. So are you I ready for this I one? Fork, yes, fork. <laughs> Did you have finished? All right, let's see what we have for Thomas. Oh, Thomas, are you there? Look what I did some research on Google, and this is what I found. Oh, look, Thomas, it's a farmer's fork. It's really big. Do you agree with this fork, Thomas? Where's Thomas? Oh, Thomas. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Look at all these forks I found. I'm... Is this what you mean by a fork, Thomas? He... <laughs> no. No, I thought I said... you said 19 different kinds of forks. Look at these beautiful forks. Wow. <laughs> I'm Tom, you can work. Oh, look at that don't one. Know. <laughs> don't search. Don't search pet ah. oh. <laughs> All uh, right. Okay. All right, Thomas. I won't. <laughs> I'm not. If I want a pet, if I'm saying pet fork, then I have to say pet fork. Oh, all right. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> okay. Let's so, see. Uh, so such all the time. Anna said, "I think every student should read books because they have many new knowledges after reading books." So here, Anna, if I was the negative team, I would say, Anna's team misunderstands what we mean by the freedom to read books during free time. What we mean is um, books that can help your homework <laughs> during free time. Anna, what do you think of that response? Is it too crazy? Anna Lee. There's Anna and Anna Lee. I'm not sure which Anna. Is it Anna Lee or Anna who wrote that nice one? I'm seeing if there are two Annas here. That might be a dilemma. Anna Lee or Anna Lee. And okay, so there are two there. And Harry, hey, Teacher Harry, oh, it's just Anna. It's Anna. Hey, Anna. I like that one. Okay. Teacher I Brandon. Do. Yes, Mary. Also, what's the weather like in your, in your country now? In my hometown, it's nearly 40 degrees now. It's so hot. Mary, what? I heard something about the weather like, did you say? It's still wonderful. In my country, so I, it's really, really hot. It's nearly oh. 40 degrees. Ah. Well, Mary, we have really strange weather now. It was sunny yesterday, but it got too warm, which is about 25 degrees. So all of this um, water came up, white clouds from the ocean, and it made everything kind of white looking, like milky looking skies. And I really like that in Japan in March and April, milky but, skies. But, but in my countryside, it's always sunny at this, and, 
and my mom literally stay in, uh, all of her time in my room with the conditioner. Ah, oh. you guys, what Mary is, what I was describing to Mary is called a coastal inversion. And so it looks like this. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, let me put this because she asked this question. What is your weather like, Brendan? And I have this here to show you. Coastal inversion is, um, here's the open sea and here's the land and it got too warm. So what happened is it got really foggy. It looks like this. So it gets foggy when the coastal inversion starts. It's kind of wow. cool because it's kind of mysterious looking weather, right? So you start with a really nice sunny day, but then all of a sudden it gets, um, all of the rain and water starts to look like this. So it's kind of nice. It's it's kind of cool, actually. I really like it. <laughs> Thomas, you're smiling. Do you like this idea of a coastal inversion? Weird. Do you get these in Vietnam, Thomas? There's Thomas? nothing at the fog. Thomas, you're like, you're like a science kid, right? You really like science? Yeah. Yeah, so do you know the coastal inversion? No. The weather Basically, outside... I've never heard of it in my life before. I'm going to teach it to you then, okay? Here's what happens, Thomas. The weather gets this... Um, the weather is cool in the ocean. Oh, yeah, evaporation. And so, yeah, it looks like that. Listen, so... Listen to the quiet. Cold air goes down, hot air goes up, and then this comes in from the ocean. So you get this like really cool foggy weather. Hello, Susan. Wait, How are you? in my country it's also in my place it's also foggy too. Okay, so you do have I'm just fog. checking the weather. Thomas, where is that? Ho Chi Minh City or um, Hanoi? Hanoi. So Hanoi also gets the fog. Okay, yeah. cool. I didn't know that. Thank you, Thomas. You taught me something. Susan has a question. Hi, Chi. Would you like to ask a question? Um, I would just say like. In Hanoi, like in the winter, there is a lot of fog, but yeah. and in the spring, but I don't think there's a coastal inversion because there's not enough water. But ah, I, it, yeah. it's quite foggy. But there's one thing it's funny in Hanoi in this like these days, you get like sunny and rainy in one time, and then oh, so the like there's, there's still the sun, but there's still the rain. Yeah. And it happens like all day. Uh, and is the weather kind of hot then outside? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Huh. So very good, you guys. Thank you for sharing that. That's a good idea. Okay. Who's Who wants to talk? Is that yeah. Thomas? Who's talking? Is it Thomas? Yeah. No. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. Okay, so Thomas, you taught me about I, I Hanoi's I weather. Want my mom is okay, but you know, I'm... Susan actually gave me some more detailed okay. information about Hanoi's weather. Basically, she, she had Miss... a little bit more information than you, Thomas. Oh no, Miss, Susan! Not... I think Susan knew more about the weather than than Thomas. <laughs> All right, you guys. Yes, is that Susu? Who's talking? Yes. I'm waiting you. <laughs> Thomas, what? Susu, what is this? Did you send me a message? No, uh, um, no. But in no, in my oh. place, it is not foggy, but it's too hot in there. In here. Uh, so you're a Hanoi person too, right? Yeah. Okay, so you guys have strange weather in Hanoi. It changes a lot. Brandon, huh. I, I don't live in Hanoi, but in my countryside is really, really hot, too. Oh, all right. You guys, we need a yeah. Vietnam map to help us here, okay? So let me do this. Vietnam. Geography. Map. Map, yeah. Geography map. Okay, let me pick the best one, you guys, so you can help me explain this. Because you guys are, it's okay, we've done everything we need to do today with the debate. We have one more game to play. All right, so there it is. You guys know your geography. Is that a good map, you guys? It looks a little blurry. But these are the famous mountains all along Vietnam, right? Yes. Okay. So if this is the coast and then these are the coastal towns, if the water is cool but it's hot here, 
then you'll get your coastal inversions, especially in Hanoi. But wait, I want to get a better map, you guys. I don't like that map. It's not very good. Uh, let's check this map. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so um, Hanoi. Susan, can you describe this? What? Well, if Ho Chi Minh City is here, then it's about 600 kilometers here to Hanoi. The weather is really different, isn't it? Yeah, so like in the, I don't know, in the south, they only have two kinds of weather. It's like, if it's not really sunny, it's really rainy. But like in the north, I don't know, like you go very far north, it's a bit cold sometimes. But like Hanoi, like the winter is not really icy cold. It's like, it's the humid kind of cold that makes you like very shivery. Yeah, Susan, that's a great point. When I was in Taipei, Taiwan last year, it was the shivery wet cold that made me feel really cold, which is crazy because, Susan, I come from Chicago and Hiroshima has a lot of snowy, dry cold, but that Taipei cold would just make me shake and shiver. It was really crazy. But, hey, Jen, did you have a teacher. question? Yep. Yeah. Mary, is that teacher. you? Teacher Brandon, yes. uh, what's the is the weather like in Japan? The where, where that's where you live. What the weather like? Well, you today know. it's foggy. It's, hot. it's foggy. It's because we're having a coastal inversion that I was talking it's about. Hot. So the skies are all kind of milky white. But also, Mary, there are a lot of trees that are having flowers right now too. So it smells oh, yeah. really nice. Yeah. It's like perfect weather. It's kind of like storybook like weather. Storybook. It's hard to describe. I really like it. Really like let me show you. Oh, let me show you guys. Um, because I really want you to have a good idea of this cherry, cherry blossom. Uh -uh. Okay. So it's. I hope they show these skies at night. So do you see the beautiful cherry blossoms? So, oh my goodness! I know, isn't it beautiful? But that's Teacher actually. Teacher Brendan, I go this way. <laughs> a beautiful place like that. Isn't it beautiful? It's kind of magical, huh, Nam? Yeah. And so this is on a really sunny day. But... I go here. Teacher Brendan, yeah. You beautiful. have any Teacher Brandon, did you yes. uh, go anywhere to uh, watch the blossom with your wife? Yeah, all we have to do, Nam, is, um, hey, Nam, you're there. You're in um, Hyogo. So where we go is just near our house. There are, yeah. um, right on the ridge, we have all these beautiful trees and people do the picnic, the Ohana Mi there um, in like my home. The, the the pink uh, flower is not uh, many, but the like yellow flower or white flower, it's a lot now. There we go. So do you see the sky here in Hiroshima? Um, and Jen, you always ask me about the atomic bomb. This is the atomic bomb dome where Hiroshima got hit by the atomic bomb right over this dome. And um, so um, some days... Hiroshima is the famous. Is Hiroshima is the famous city in Japan? The city has been bombed by yeah. a large bomb. Yeah, it's true. Yes, um, a uh, little uh, the bomb. I think it was caught by a li little baby. Yeah, little boy and fat boy. <laughs> um, you're from USA, the one that hit Japan. Hit yes, baby. very good, Ken. Hey Ken, um, who else is there? Um, who Susan? You were I was describing this coastal inversion to you. Do you see the skies are a little bit blue and a little bit white? So that's a classic yeah. coastal inversion. The weather's getting warmer, but the ocean is still cold. So you get these just kind of milky white clouds during the daytime. It's really nice because if you're the cherry blossoms really like this weather. If you have this weather, the cherry blossoms stay beautiful for about four or five days, right? So yeah. that's my favorite time. And this is the magical island called Miyajima. This is Hiroshima City here. So if you guys come to Hiroshima, I hope you can come, come to this island. And uh, I will I, come to that island. 
Yeah. So, I've been uh, on a Japan tour and eat there. Yeah. So Where Ken, did go there? Ken and Ryan, you have been to Miyajima Island? Yeah. I've been to Japan a lot of places. Yeah. This island used to have wild monkeys on it, but the government took the wild monkeys away because they kept biting people and they have dirty teeth. So the people had to get all these shots from the doctor. Japan so they, monkeys are like bite people a lot. They do. They bit my friend June. And so he had to go to the hospital and get shots every day. Ooh, but ooh, yeah. ooh. And so there it is. You can have a cherry blossom picnic. Hey, Ryan, what do you call the cherry blossom picnic in Japan? Uh, Tisha Brandon. Sakura? You know, Sakura is the blossom, but the picnic is called Ohanami. Ohanami. Oh. You know that one, Ryan. Mary, question. Um, I remember that you have one told us about your friend's story. That's when the monkey bites him, he yes. say, "Why the monkey choose him?" Uh, just, but, but not other people uh, when uh, around him has uh, over t uh, two two hundred people, right? Yes. This is true. They're kind of dangerous. Look at it. I mean, they're intelligent, but they're kind of mean, right? There were 350, and Mary, this one monkey bit him. So they moved all of the Hiroshima monkeys to Nagano, to the mountains here. And so in winter, it's really cold, and they don't like it. So you guys know the famous story, what the monkeys did. The monkeys went to a hot springs, and they sit in the hot water all day. And this is how they get warm. What? Yeah, they love the hot springs. Yeah, I, I don't think they sitting in a hot spring. Look at this they guy. They can even He's cook eggs stuff. in it. They're intelligent, but they bite people, you know. Look at these guys. They really love it. This guy's going to sleep in the hot water. It's unbelievable. <laughs> All right. uh, I don't maybe, think they, <laughs> maybe they bite people because they think that's bananas. <laughs> it's true. Hey, it's a hey, really teacher. good point, Mary. Yeah. Uh, I think it's best to visit the monkey when it's winter because they will be in the water and if they uh, went, uh, go out of the water, they will be cold like this. No, oh, and Ken, this guy looks like he used shampoo in the bath because his fur looks so beautiful, right? <laughs> the no, monkey no, 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 no. Look at this guy. Oh, I love this bath. I never want to leave this bath. And then this monkey's like, come on, you have to get out of this bathtub. You can't sit in the bathtub all day. <laughs> Uh, why don't they sing? These are called the Japanese snow monkeys. So if you come to Japan in January, you could see these monkeys in Nagano. But be careful because they really do bite. Oh, look, the little baby monkey, too. <laughs> All right. Are you guys yes. ready? I want to do part two of the lesson is a game for you because you're doing a wonderful job. So Eat let me... Brendan. Yes, yeah. please. Can you continue watching the chat? The chat? Yeah. Let me see. Did someone put... Uh, I bet that my cat will fly that loop is what Jen said. Jen, that's very funny. Um, let's see what else. Jen, you're a funny girl. You make me not boom as a nuke, says Sam Bao. I can't see, says Suzu. Stop it. I don't like it, says Jen. And then Anna says, that's your mom and dad, Jen Zelda. And then Suzu said, I lost my cheesecake because Suzu has been talking about cheese for two days. All right. My cheesecake is stupid, says Susu. <laughs> That's kind of funny, Susu. My cheesecake is stupid because you say, how can you be uh, Susu? Sambao said Japan was very bad in the past. That's true. No, no, no. no. I am. Um, I am. Um, I thought. And um, uh, then, uh, then the something something said my cheesecake is stupid. Yeah, I didn't smaller. say your cheesecake, Susu. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But I, I just thought, and then I know, I know, I know, I know. You guys are just being silly. Don't worry. It's it's like a crazy fight. It's just a little fight. No big deal, it right? Does. And it was even more funnier when you, when you see at the bottom. She is a funny girl. I think so. All it right. Does. Yes, it Mr. Does. Ryan. Nam Nu Yen. You watch my... I did. Can we show it? Uh, Is it okay to show? Okay. You do a great job. Let me see. I'm going to look in yellow for your file, if that's okay, Ryan, if you don't mind. Uh, Mr. Ryan. There you are, Ryan. I got it. 
Ryan, I actually really liked this presentation. So I'm going to show this to everyone. It's a little bit noisy. So yeah, okay, the, this is good. This is good. Mr. Ryan. Okay, everybody. And Hi, my name is Ryan. I'm eight years old. I'm from Vietnam, but I'm in Japan now. Today, I'm going to do my homework from teacher Brendan. Yes. My topic is should summer vacation be from January 1st mm. to December 31st. Mm. Contrary to what the affirmative team suggests, <laughs> yes. we maintain that summer vacation should not be too long mm. because many students will be bored. Let me see, where is Ryan? And, uh, they will play. Only a little student will study mm. and they will forget all the <laughs> lesson that they study. Yes. Some students do not have friends near their house mm. and they do not have brother and sister so they can't play with their mom and dad go to work. Then they will play video games or watch TV. Netflix. Teacher Brandon, you're staring your uh, like yeah. screens. Your yeah. eyes very bad. What was it? Okay. I think that summer vacation but I should can't get be that. three weeks. Hmm. You could do the lesson that you are not good at. These are my opinions. Thank you for listening. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ryan. Ryan, could you hear the whole speech? Okay, I love your comment. It's a great presentation. It's a great I presentation. Love it. I love Ryan, it. I love the part you say. Oh. I thought that was really funny. Okay. You, you guys. guys. Oh, there's a strange echo. Wait one moment. Okay, is it better? All right, good, good. All right, um, I need someone's help. Uh, Mary, can you read this for me? Because I think you want yeah, to help. Yeah, of course. We're going to play course. a game, you guys, because we have half an hour. We can definitely play this game. So, Mary, um, can you read this? Debate bingo. Debate bingo. You know, you might that yourself. Well, how is all debate? This is the debate stuff going to have me in school work? And when I grow up and get a job, let's take a look at the carries and all workers who use the debate skills. Yeah. Doctors, yes. lawyers, <laughs> politicians, TV yeah. news people, huh. journalists, teachers, professional students, actor, police, judge, mothers, fathers, children, planners, president people, surgeon, yeah. insurance, artists, magician, pro producer, director, dancer, writer, manager, chef, cook, designer, programmer. Nice. Very good. So well, those there words. A lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. And you say, well, why do these jobs use um, debate skills? Because do you know the word surgeon? When the people do serious work on your body, they open your body. A surgeon does surgery. You know, you have teams of surgeons who sit in a room and they discuss how they're going to do the surgery. If it's really serious, there might be like seven surgeons all having a debate about the best way to fix somebody's heart, you know? And so they actually talk about this for about a half an hour. They said, we're going to do this to the heart and that. And then another surgeon might say, well, we have to be careful because the person has some damage here on the left. So even surgeons are having a debate. Um, fathers and mothers and children, you guys maybe say, well, wait, I'm debating my mom and dad. So Jen, think about that. You say, mom, I don't feel like I want to go to that birthday party on Saturday. Do I really have to go? 
And then Jen, maybe she says, it's kind of important, Jen. It's your cousin. It's your favorite cousin. And I said, I know, but look, I just finished taking all these tests. So Jen, do you see how that's also a debate with your mom? No, your mother just says, do it and you do it. It's just a joke. I also make another joke that my that I bet my cat will fly and it will go loop the loop. <laughs> That's the cat. But what about you know just debating your mother or your father about like um, doing something you don't want to do? Can you do that? You what? I can't hear. Oh, you know, you debate your mom or your dad about doing something you do want to do or don't want to do. Do you know this? Yeah. Okay, so you like, you can debate with your mom and dad. That's what I mean by that. Okay, you guys, are you ready? This is what I want you to do for your bingo card. And I will show you here. So we have to go to bingo cards with words. I can't talk because in in my living room uh, it's very noisy. Ah, I hear some little children, right? No, I mean my mom is an English teacher like you, so I can't talk. Oh, she's teaching at the minute, right? Okay. All right, you guys, can you make a bingo car with words that looks like this? But don't put these easy words like what, doing, can. That's for like first and second graders. You guys are old. You can do debate skills, right? So you don't put wanna, birthday, free, can't, KU. No, that's crazy. I want you guys in these uh, box one, box two, box three, box four. Can you put the debate careers? Like you could put children. You could put judges. You can put students and mix it all up. So you're going to need a piece of paper Teacher. and a pencil. Teacher, uh, can you do a, an example? Yeah, I don't have a bingo card, though, so you guys have to make the boxes. Uh, so, Mary, for example, so, I take the word politician, and I write politician here, and I write here. free here. So we have 25 minutes. If you guys, can you make the boxes and put the words in there? We have a lot of time. Usually this takes about 10 minutes to make a good bingo card. So while you make the card, it's okay to run and go get paper and pencil and pen, but I don't have a computer version. So you have to go get, it's okay to go get a pencil. Teacher, teacher yeah. Brendan, can I do on the computer? I can do this card. You can? That's really cool. What are you using? Can you do that with Microsoft Word or something on the internet? Yeah, I can do with the words. Oh, My uh, dad told me that. Hmm. How many is how many is uh, like boxes. Yes. Uh, the boxes? How so many boxes? Boxes. boxes okay. One, do we two, have to make? three, four, five. Can you make twenty-five? So five and five, and then in the middle is free. Everybody, and then you can put okay. insurance here, artist here. So if you guys don't have um, the Microsoft Word program, you can use a pencil and paper or a pen and paper. You know, you can quickly make five boxes here, five boxes here, five here, five here. So your total number of boxes is 25. And I made about 30, 28 or 30 words here. But remember, mix up your words like business people goes here, artists go here, dancers can go here, anywhere you want. It's free Mr. to do. Brendan, can you put back the thing? Um, put back the, the list, please. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Susan. I did forgot that it wasn't showing the list. That's crazy. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> I was focusing only on that sample bingo card. Okay, so here's the list. Thank you, Susan, so much. We have doctors, lawyer, politicians, TV news people, journalists, teachers, professors, students, actors, police, judges, mothers, fathers, children. Planners. When I say planners, I mean city planners, you know, people who professionally plan things. Um, surgeons who work on your body. Insurance are people who protect your car, your house. Um, they pay you money if you have an accident. Artists, directors, producers. So when I say debate skills, what I mean is all these people discuss things and they decide if it's a good idea or a bad idea.
Okay. What's that noise, Mr. Brendan? That noise? That that was my ch this noise? This? <laughs> it's my big chair because I use a tall chair for my computer desk. It's uh, the kind of chair you find in a coffee shop when you sit at a tall table and you drink. Jen, I need it because my leg hurts. I can't sit on a regular chair. And then this is the question if Mr. Thomas is there. Thomas says, uh, teacher, how come you never look directly at the screen? Because Thomas is always playing these games where he goes like this. <laughs> so he says, teacher, why would I? <laughs> yes, I love that silly face, Thomas. And he says, teacher, why won't you do this too? I say, because Thomas, I have to look at your faces to make sure your pronunciation is okay. All right. All right, keep working on those bingo cards. Bingo cards. Thomas, what did you make, by the way? What are those beautiful colors? I made a wheel. Oh, nice. Stickers. Oh, from those post-it notes. Really nice. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Have you made that before, or is it the first time? This is the first time I made a wheel. Nice sticky work. Notes. Now, does your mother say, Thomas, don't use the sticky notes to make a wheel? No. It's I okay. have mission. <laughs> you, well, you have magic and you have good art skills, Thomas, so I don't think she'd get so angry with you. It's pretty cool, actually, Thomas, that you made a... Show me again. That looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll do that to make my wife a birthday present. I have more. <laughs> oh, man. Green ones. And now we have... Oh, color. it's really nice, Thomas. It's really good. But, Thomas, and do you... I use... also have more. Do you I don't use... have green because the color set doesn't have green. Thomas, do you use the sticky notes for your own homework or is it for your mom? I use it for my own homework. Oh, so basically cool. it's mine, so I can do whatever with it. Oh, all right. So it's okay to make like art projects with sticky notes? All yes. Right. Okay, you ready for a crazy comment, Thomas? Does, Mr. Does your... Yes, please. Mr. Benton, there was a time when I learned online and the teacher assigned a lot of homework. And yeah. I use like I use a random generator to generate what thing I do first. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Because I'm too bored. Uh-huh. Susan, I'm just laughing at Thomas. You know, his mother says, you can make sticky note art projects, but don't put them in the refrigerator, Thomas. <laughs> It's my oh, little I will put it in the refrigerator. No, Thomas, your mom says, don't put your art projects in the refrigerator. And you say, but mom, it's made of jello. It's made of pudding. <laughs> I'm just that being silly. Like because Thomas, you said there are 19 different kinds of forks. And I think that's pretty cool. Henry, yeah. how are you doing? Henry has the $100. I wish I had all that money. By the way, Henry, in class number one today, they said, if I win bingo, do I get $100? And I said, I don't think so. I don't have $100. <laughs> Henry, how are you doing today? I'm sorry I didn't call on you. Oh, uh, I feel very good today. Okay. Did you have a question about any Just of Just a little bit of time. Uh, all right. You're honest. Very good. Hey, Leila, you also did a great job on your presentation. I want to show it, but I can't get the video to work today because Zoom doesn't let live streaming a video if the video comes from maybe YouTube or something like that. And they only do the audio, the listening part. So sorry about that. Okay. And who else do we have? We have Milk. How are you, Milk? I'm right. Hey, Milk, are you going to try the bingo challenge? Mm -hmm. Are you going to try the bingo? Did you make a card? Hey, Jenny. No. Jenny, who gets to eat Oreos today? Lucky. Hey, Jenny, did you make a bingo card? Um, No, I don't. Oh, what do you want to play? Um, yes. Okay, so see if you can make a card. It just has to have professor, student, actor, and you can write it, you know, like this. Here, let me show the bingo card one more time. Because I, uh, Teacher, is, this, yeah. is time to play yes? 
Yeah, we're getting really close to bingo playing time, I think. So let me show the card one more time because some students said, can I do this? Yeah, of course you can do this, you guys. You can write teacher here. I can do it. Yeah, you can do it. I sure stop. Stop. Okay, just remember you need 25 of these doctor, lawyer um, things, right? And I'll put it back up. Susan said, Brenda, put that back up. We need to see that. Okay. All right, you guys, there it is. Doctor, lawyer, politician. Doctor, lawyer, politician. Are you guys ready? We can start. Ready? We can start. And I'll okay. use it. Okay. I'm not finished. You, you're not finished? Oh, try to finish, you guys. Finish, you guys. Can you show me a picture again? Yeah, okay. No problem. Here we go. And we'll go to this picture. Oh, my God. What, what? <laughs> right. Can we start now, teacher? We only have 15 minutes left. I know. I know. Well, let me just show that picture of the bingo card one more time. So if you're still making your bingo card, you guys, it should look like this. It's 25 squares. Each of these is called a square. And in the squares, you put children, planners, producers, directors. These are all careers that use debate skills, you guys. That's why I put that list there, because I wanted to inspire you. Like, why should we learn all this debate? Because when you get a job, you're going to be debating what's good and bad all the time, right? Susu. Can we start now? Yeah, let's start, everybody. We'll start. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this. Main My cheesecake theme. is melting because of, because of this. Yeah. All right, here we go. Finally, thing Susu said, one million cheese me punch. But Susu, I don't understand what that means. One million cheese me punch, right? Means one, Teacher one Brendan, million how many um, boxes cheese. do Teacher. we have? To win. 25. You should go five across and five down. So you should have 25 boxes total. And in the very middle box, you can put free again. Okay. So let me show you that one more time because you guys seem to be struggling with that. It's okay if you've never made your own bingo card because, you know, they have bingo cards you can buy at the store. So just one more time. And I promise, uh, Mary, we have time. I'll do it quickly. So here we go. Here's your bingo card. One, two, three, four, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five. And so that equals 25 boxes. And in the yes, middle, you can do Can one. we play now? Yeah, let's play now. <laughs> okay. You're like, I want to play. Let's play this game. All right, here we go. Hey, teacher, let's play this game. Now, remember, I'm going to put the answers in chat so you really understand. Okay, here's bingo number one, you guys. It is students, students, students. So your first word is students, students. And this is good for your pronunciation too, students. Number two, police, police, police. Police also have to go talk to the judge and the lawyer, so they debate too, police. To say, how do you know he was a bad guy? Oh, the was a bad guy. The, I yeah. saw him take the money. I saw him take the money from the bank. Okay, next one. Lawyer. This is the number one debate. Lawyers always debate. That's all they do all day long is they debate, debate, debate. Okay. Lawyer. Pronounced lawyer. Next, artists. Artists. You say he's an artist. An artist debate. You know, they say, I'm giving my paintings to the museum. The museum wants me to do something different. So you start to discuss with the museum. This is what I want to do with my artwork. Okay, journalist is a newspaper person. Jur Hachi Susan, did you get bingo already? I want to add, so it must be like so five. Five, I'm sorry, up, five down or five diagonals, right? Oh, yeah, you can do five up, five across, or five diagonally. Diagonally. Okay. Here's the word diagonal. You guys, most of you know diagonal. Diagonal. It's that cross style, X style. Diagonal. What is diagonal? Oh, what is diagonal? We have to show a picture of diagonal. Um, diagonal. Across, yeah. Well, across, here's... 
Diagonal. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get a. Uh, I think it's diagonal. What is it? Yeah, my spelling. I know it's get bingo. You almost got bingo. Is this right? Who almost has bingo? Are you guys ready? Here's diagonal. Diagonal means you can go across like this. Here's across, up and down. This is diagonal, like a diamond. Right? Diagonal. Diagonal. Okay. Let's go back to those words. Okay. And there's the chat. Teacher, can we go by row? Yeah, you can go by row too if you get five. How about in a row. column? All right. So column is good. So column. That's teacher Brandon. Can we? So ac across is okay. Up and down is okay. In columns and diagonal. That's okay. Um, teacher Brandon, can we go next? All right. Oh, who's done all that talk? Okay, thank you. You turn off the mic. I know. Who's got that mic? It's true, Jenny. Jen, well, those were your uh, mom's students, Jenny. Okay. Here we go. Let's do another chat one we have. Um, I want to try this one, surgeons, because it's a really good one for you guys to learn for your vocabulary. The special doctor who does an operation mm -hmm. is called a surgeon, is a surgeon, is a surgeon. Okay, do you see? Surgeon. So that's your next Teacher, I'm bingo. Who got I'm bingo? bingo? Is it Mary? Yeah, okay, Mary, I'm Mary. Mary. Mary, read your words so I can check. Um, Arstis, a lawyer. Yes. Yeah. Police, yeah. students, yeah. mother, journalist. Yeah. That's the word I have to uh, choose. And yeah. the artist, lawyer, police, oh. students, and mothers have, have been crushed. Nice. So you got it? You got bingo already? Yeah, I got Yay. bingo already. Okay, so Mary, you're our champion. You're our, our first place champion. Let's see now if you can get two or three bingos. Then you get to be the grand <laughs> champion. <laughs> Like this morning, one of the students got um, six bingos and this one boy called her a liar and they got really angry. The first class is kind of a wild class. They said, don't call me a liar. They started fighting you guys because she really did get six bingos. We checked her card. Teacher, so yes. that means I have to get two more bingos to win? Yeah. If you want to get three bingos, you are the grand champion. Okay? Kill me, teacher Brandon. Jenny, what? <laughs> Can I leave this class because I need to go and learn at the dance class. Okay, good luck in dance, Jenny. Thank you so much for your presentations, you and your brother. You did a great job. Bye-bye, Jenny. Nice work. Thank you very much. Teacher, okay. Brandon, can yes. we go next, teacher? I need to go to another okay. class now. Can I leave? Yeah, you can leave. That's Harry, Henry. Yeah, you and your sister have that thing. So that's fine, Henry. Thank you. Welcome, Henry. Good work. See Thank you. you for coming to my class. See you. Bye bye, Henry. Okay. You we go next, teacher. Musician. Are you guys ready? Musician. My friend is a pretty musician. good musician. He teaches music, music to school students as old as you guys. Musician. Musician. Okay. How about this one, planners? I like this word, planners. He's a city planner. He designs parks for Ho Chi Minh City. He's a city planner. Okay, then how about dancers? Dancer or dancers? Dancers. Someone had to, Henry and his sister Jenny had to go to the dance class. So they want to be dancers. So to be dancers. Yeah. Producers. Producers are TV or movie producers. Producers who produce your anime. Producers. There's producers. Okay, now we have mothers and we have children. Don't we have children? Did we do mothers? Did we do children yet? Let's do children, you guys. I have a feeling someone's going to get that for the grandchildren. Teacher, grand teacher yeah. I got one more bingo. 
Is that Mary again? Is that Mary again? Yeah, I'm, I'm Mary. Mary, you're close to being a grand champion. So if you get one more, you're yeah. the grand champion. All right. Uh, let's do this one. Police. 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 I don't think I did police already, did I? Yes, no. you did police. Um, oh, you I did, did all police. police. Oh, already. no. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to think. I'm looking at this list and this list. Um, this is really long. This Shall we do really long. business people? Business people. But I don't know if anyone cho chose that because it's so long. Business people. Yeah. Okay. But I choose that. But you I did chose choose that. that. That's really me long. Too. Awesome. I chose I'm happy me because too. many of you, your mothers and fathers are business people. So that's why I chose that. And remember, business that. people also debate. They always have discussions, right? Now, this one's really long, too. Are you ready? TV news people are the people you see on TV news talking each night. TV news people. TV news people. Brandon, I only, Brandon, I only wrote news people. Oh, that's fine, Thomas. If you have news people, it's enough. Mr. It's Brandon, I have one bingo. Who got bingo? Who's the next one Me. bingo? Susan, thank you. Congratulations. You are a champion. Now, no, I you... guess one bingo. Oh, well, one bingo is okay for champion. Now, the grand champion is three bingos, right? So we're trying to get to three bingos next. And we'll see if you guys can do it. I think Mary's going to be the bingo. best. <laughs> How about and doctors? Bingo now. Doctors. Doctors. You know, like if someone That's smokes perfect. cigarettes, the doctor debates. He says, you should not smoke those cigarettes. And the person says, but doctor, I need one cigarette a day. And they say, no, 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 no smoking. So they are debating you guys. Debating with the doctors probably not doctor. a good thing. Brandon. Okay. Yes. I've got a bingo. I've got a bingo. Yay. Congratulations. Um, I'm a teacher, but if you have a oh, teacher God, at a college, he's called a professor. And professors love to debate too. So the word is professors. Oh, these keep going to Anna Lee. I'm sorry. So we have professors, doctors. Um, being, Anna Lee said, I got bingo. So I have doctors and professors. This is to everyone. We did doctors. What and about programmers? Professors. A college professor. How about actors? Did we do actors yet? Actors debate. I don't think so. Yeah, actors get I, angry I, with the producer. I wrote actos, you guys. It's teacher, actor. Brandon. Teacher, yes. Brandon. I got the three bingo. Oh, Mary is our grand champion, everyone. Brandon, yeah. I've yes, got Thomas. another bingo. You got another. How many do you have, Thomas? Two. All right. Well, Mary's our grand champion. Let's do three more words and see if we have some more grand champions, right? I've already got two. That's All right. Two. Let's see. Insurance people. Insurance people sometimes have to argue with lawyers. They debate about paying millions of dollars for damage, right? Oh, I got it. Politicians. Politicians are always debating. They're debating if they have the money for a new sports stadium or something. Um, judges. Judges listen to the debate. In high school debate, anywhere, judges always anywhere. listen to judges the always listen to Brandon. Thomas, did you get it? I've got another. Brandon. All right. We already did judges. I did. You already did judges? I'm sorry about that, Thomas. Thomas, let's do fathers. I've got my third bingo. You got your first? Congratulations. You're a champion. Ken, good work. Fathers? I mean, third. Yeah. Fathers. Oh, who got third? Three bingos. Three bingos. Three. Oh, Ken. I got a bingo of oh. father. All right. Third. So, Thomas, you guys right. are grand Thomas, champions. Thomas. Right. I got only two now. Okay, so here's our last one. Are you guys ready? Here's our last word for today. It will be directors. Directors. Company directors. Movie directors. <laughs> Thomas, love that artwork. It looks really good. I think you have talent. That's actually pretty cool. Actually. <laughs> right. You can stick it anywhere. And if you stick it on a light, the light will turn rainbow. Oh, I love that. All right, you guys, we have to start saying goodbye. So if you wanted to take debate two, I don't know if the classes will be smaller or bigger. We have to decide on that. You guys do a great job. You guys are always really focused. You try your best. Thanks, Ryan. Can you last some minutes? Can you last some minutes for me to walk in? Do you need, like, counting? Yeah. Counting all your bingos? Hello, Anna. Yeah. 
Hello, uh, Mary. One, two, two three, yeah. four. Hi, Anna. How are you? Sorry you were quiet today. Anna, you did a great presentation. Mimi, good to see you. If you want to come back and join the Maniacs class. <laughs> Actually, Mimi, this class is pretty well behaved. First class is wild. Yes, Mary. I have five bingo. Oh, so you really are the grand champion. You really are. Okay, so thank you for all your video um, presentations. You guys did a great job. And also thank you to teacher Michael because he really showed you guys how to do that face and do those hand things. Those are pretty good. Keep remembering to do those, right? Really important. Some of you are really good. I noticed so many of you do that really well. Okay, so thank you very much. Any questions for Brendan? Teacher Brendan. <laughs> Thomas, what is that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Where do you come from? Uh, where are friend? you done? Where do you I live now? I'm in Hiroshima. Uh, in my house. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm in Hiroshima in my house. Hey, Ken, good to see you. Ken, thank you for your presentations. You always do a nice presentation. Teacher yeah. Brandon, can you show yes. us your wife? My wife? Oh my goodness. Yes, uh, of course. I think you can you show us one of your wife picture? All right, let me can try. Can you show us your family all? Like of course. Your family. Yeah. Let me see, these pictures are really old. I don't know if I still have this here. It's called, uh, well, that one's not so good. Let me see. It's called iPhoto. Yeah, I'll show you a picture. We have a couple minutes. I can do that, you guys. It's really nice of you to ask. Uh, let's see if we have an old, this will be a long time ago though. Hi photo. Oh, it's taking a long time, you guys. Why is it taking so long? Oh my goodness, it has a picture of food. Um, let's see what we have here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Okay, are you guys ready? This is. Oh my gosh. I'm ready. 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 There's my wife and our cat and Brendan. I was a little bit fatter there. Beautiful. Thank you. Brendan. Yes. Brendan. Yes. 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 But I was. My dad used to be an engineer. Oh, really? I think so. Thomas. And my dad's Freddy too. Peter Brandon. Hey, Ryan, is that your brother? Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. a cool kid. Hello, Ryan's brother. Oh, oh he's a baby brother, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Teacher yeah. Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Jen. That's 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 name was Alvarez, but she died about six years ago, Jen. So we were really sad that she died. She, so she died. Um, she just got so old. She came to our house when she was ten years. Um, she was already ten years old. So when you look at this picture, Jen, she was twenty years old. And uh, oh, that's she just got old. But I'm really sad. So cats yeah. live for like 20 years and then they die. It's really sad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you okay, guys, we have to say goodbye, okay? So I'll see you next time. Thank you, Ryan and that little brother. Bye-bye, Mary. Thank you, Susu. Bye-bye, Susan. Thanks, Harry and Tracy. Bye-bye, Susan. Bye-bye, Thomas, of course. Bye-bye, Bye-bye, Bye, Mr. Brendan. Ryan, we'll see you guys again. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, Thomas. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye.